Lane Cove National Park and Lane Cove River on Monday the 29th of May. That last shot was looking downstream, this is looking upstream. Hello, Jim 12s here, and today is Monday 29th of May 2023. And today I'm here in the Lane Cove National Park to the south of the river, the Lane Cove River. And sadly, I'm in earshot of a fair bit of traffic. So the National Park is not that big in terms of width, although it might be reasonably long. But I can just see through the trees a, a huge um, high bridge called, just to give people some idea of where I might be, the Deburs Bridge on Lane Cove Road. So that's where I'm headed to when I've done this little video. Anyway, enough chattering, here goes. Today's topic I would like to talk about is why I don't use a smartphone. And I've got nine points. Here goes, some of these may well jar with some people. Um, I don't really apologize, but um, let's see how we go. Some may ring bells, you never know. Years ago, I can't remember how many, over 10 I, I, I believe. Yeah, it would be over 10. I had a, a mobile phone and when I held it to my ear for more than even a few seconds, the side of my head got hot. And I got a little bit bothered by that. Even when I took the phone away, my head was still hot. It didn't hurt but it was annoying and it would wear off after some time. Anyway, I got to looking into that whole phenomenon and I didn't understand it, but I understood that uh, mobile phones give off or receive um, waves of a frequency that are detected by the human body and some people are more susceptible than others. So I ended up becoming one of those who would use my phone uh, on speaker. So it would be arm's length, sometimes annoying to people, I'm sure, uh, but at least I didn't get a hot head. Uh, anyway, I notice now that a lot of people use their phones nowhere near their head. That's an interesting point, number one. But that's mobile phones, not the internet, I know. Number two, this one I've felt for a long time. Emails coming to you wherever you are. In other words, your work follows you because your work is always email driven and it's on your phone therefore you feel compelled to answer it and yeah you can't escape work it follows you home it follows you wherever you go and uh, I don't particularly like that I love a distinct separation between work and non-work work and home number three um, managing stress. Now, I think that if your work can follow you wherever you are, at any time of day or night, you really have a hard time um, keeping the stresses of work into the working day. And that, I think, is that, that lack of boundary, cockatoo giving me a good greeting, that lack of boundary I'm sure can lead to greater stress levels. Number four, 
an anesthetist, an anesthetist, I'll start again, anesthetizing thought. I think that if we're carrying around the internet at all times and our first instinct is to press the click the button for the answer that we need I think we think less we think less deeply we think more superficially ah oh, Google it just go on the internet wherever you are you've got a problem you want to solve a problem ah oh, what does YouTube say you know it's so easy and I think that is a, a sense of anaesthetizing thought. Number five, addiction to the internet, screen time. I came to this bushwalk today on the metro and I counted up and down the corridor. Maybe in my eyesight, it was a full train, maybe in my eyesight, four people other than me who weren't looking at their phone everyone else was so I think it's uh, addictive and I'd rather not be addicted um, related to that uh, it's not really another point but the question of who's driving your agenda it's uh, I like to get up in the morning and ask God what should I be doing today what should I be focusing on and I put him first uh, in my day I try to and to me if we're carrying mobile phones around which are so compulsive and so addictive then I think that whatever's there may be setting our agenda rather than what we really should be setting our agenda on. Um, and I think it tends to create a, a, a tendency towards passivity rather than activity. Number six. This one you might find odd I've called this isolation from the environment and others or if you like insulation from the environment and others now on this walk today I haven't seen anybody on their mobile phone I haven't seen many people at all but the ones out here in nature are certainly having their ears and eyes alert to the sounds of nature and now I've got the sounds of the traffic but most of this walk was indeed very peaceful and I heard birds uh, I heard the wind in the leaves and those sounds you can't you can't you can't dismiss them they are so important to our well-being I believe and another thing, if you're always plugged in with your earphones or headphones uh, and the mobile phone is driving your agenda, then I'm sure that you're less aware of other people and maybe other people's needs. Uh, today, I, I met a, a girl, um, didn't talk to her more than one word. She'd been suspended from school she had her laptop with her and she was trying to find um, free internet access um, if if i had my earphones in earphones on would i have noticed her she was a very needy girl probably 13 14 years of age very needy uh, i wish i could have helped but i couldn't um, I'm just concerned that with the preoccupation f of the phone 
you're less likely to say hi to somebody, good morning, um, as you're going around your day and have your eyes open to potential needs. You might also miss the sound of traffic and in Sydney, I gathered a few years ago, it was quite a thing that buses were taking out pedestrians because they were too engrossed in their phones. Number seven, uh, multitasking. You see, I think in today's society, the fact that we can multitask is, is a, a symbol of value. Um, of importance and because we are multitasking we're doing something with the phone as well as what el whatever else we're doing uh, we're actually less focused on the task at hand uh, therefore our concentration is superficial and our connection with people is less genuine. Um, you know the story, you see the couple in the uh, restaurant, both of them on their mobile phone. They've been out for a meal together. Have they? Number eight. I think the internet on phones feeds ego. It sends a message that I'm important, I can be reached anywhere, I'm the servant of, of the servants, I'm, <laughs> that's my whole purpose, to be reached and to be accessible and therefore that actually is a sense of ego. Uh, I'm super busy, uh, I can multitask, just look, the internet goes with me everywhere. And uh, finally number nine, I've called this the app appetite. One of the words I hate most is the word app. I'm not sure how to spell it, but I presume it's A-P. Uh, and it, uh, so many organizations and parts of our lives are asking for us to download the latest app. The app for this, the app for that. And of course, banks want us to have the app for this and the app for that, so that uh, digital currency can just slide under our noses, literally, and we won't know it has happened. And where has gone our own independence and our own personal responsibility? Um, the state control obviously behind such a move and the potential and the reality of personal tracking. So they're my reasons and there are no doubt many, many more that others would come up with. Uh, I'd love to hear comments in the comments below and if you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, I would love you to and please, as they say, press the like button. Uh, I have rarely encourage people to do that but here goes i'm doing it now enough of me rambling in the bush bye for now